Illness is a period of sickness caused by some form of disturbance to the normal structure or function of an animal's body. Ill health is mostly caused by either environmental, hereditary, chemical, or infectious agents. An environmental illness may be caused by nutritional, physical, or climatical factors. Malnutrition can result in dental issues such as foul breath, pain while eating, excessive tartar on the teeth, unhealthy weight ranges, a dull coat, dry and flaky skin, or poor organ function. Physical injury can be an obvious form of ill health. Damage to the animal's body could be caused by animal fights, car accidents, falls or sharp objects. An animal that has been impacted physically may be limping, have obvious sores or lacerations, make unusual noises such as bellowing, grunting, howling, whimpering, or have swelling and red skin. Periods of extreme heat or cold without adequate shelter can cause animals to be more vulnerable to the elements. Some examples of unwellness catalyzed by the environment include dehydration, heat stroke, hypothermia or hypothermia. Collapse, shivering, panting, pale cold hooves, abnormal heart rate, lethargy, dry nose and loss of skin are all common signs of illness. Hereditary illnesses are inherited from parents through defective genes which are passed on from one generation to the next. Some issues may be obvious from birth or a young age such as dwarfism, blindness, deafness or physical abnormalities. Other issues may arise with age such as lump developments, cancers, bone issues such as hip dysplasia, arthritis or muscular or organ problems. Chemical illness can be caused when a toxin is introduced to the animal's body through injection, inhalation, skin contact or ingestion. Chemicals can be injected into the body causing a reaction with most two common being vaccinations or through snake bites. A reaction to a snack bite will be almost instantaneous and veterinary attention should be sought out immediately. Common reactions to snake bites include weakness, collapse, vomiting, dilated pupils, and paralysis. Vaccine reactions are rare but do occur. They include allergic reactions, fever, or sensitivity at the site of injection. A poor reaction will include within the first couple of hours and should clear up within a couple of days. Illness can also occur from inhaling a toxic substance such as gases, aerosols or vapours of volatile liquids. Often such substances can be household items such as cleaning products, bleach, cosmetics and human medicines. If inhaled, an animal may experience fever, coughing, drooling and lethargy. Always keep chemicals sealed and secure from pets. These chemicals can also cause harm to the skin. Spillage of chemicals such as bleach, cleaners, cosmetics, medicines and fragrances onto an animal's skin or an animal walking over chemicals can cause burns, hair loss, wounds, blistering and discomfort. If not immediately washed off, an animal is also at risk of ingesting the chemical from licking. Ingestion is one of the most common forms of chemical-induced illness. Animals unknowingly consume toxic items such as foods, insecticides, rhododendicides, drugs, fertilizers, cleaning products and plants. 
it is important to keep in mind that the toxicity for an individual animal depends on the species, dose, and the circumstances. For example, grapes are very toxic to dogs, but they can be eaten by birds. Animals tend to become lethargic, may vomit, may have seizures, diarrhea, tremors, experience internal swelling, unable to clot blood, and a rapid heart rate which can often be at an abnormal rhythm. If you are dealing with livestock, you may notice several animals becoming ill or sudden deaths, especially if there has been a change in feed or weather. Not always, but often chemical induced illness can be somewhat sudden. They can cause genetic mutations and cell death. An infectious cause of illness is caused by an organism which can be transmitted to people and animals through the environment. Parasites and microorganisms are the main cause of illness in this category. Illnesses under this category are not necessarily contagious. Parasites are organisms that will use a host for resources at the expense of the host. They can be internal, which includes worms and flukes, or external, which includes mites, lice, ticks, fleas and flies. Preventative measures should always be carried out where possible. Internal parasites live within the body, such as worms and flukes, and often rely on an animal to continue their life cycle. Some examples of common worms include stomach worms, tapeworm, and heatworm. Liver fluke is one of the most common types of flukes in livestock. Animals impacted by these parasites may experience weight loss, lethargy, anemia, vomiting, and dehydration. External parasites live outside the body and can cause immense irritation for the animals. The animal will often be excessively shaking their head, scratching, licking, and biting certain parts of the body. Other than irritation, these external parasites can cause sores, anemia, lethargy, diarrhea, and vomiting. Paralysis ticks are the most dangerous as they can go unnoticed, causing paralysis and even death if left untreated. A microorganism is a microscopic organism that can cause illness in animals. This may be in the form of fungus, bacteria, virus, or protozoa. Fungi are plant-like organisms that lack chlorophyll. As they do not have chlorophyll, fungi absorb food from a living host in order to survive. They do not use light to make food, this means they can live in a damp and dark place. There are two broad groups of fungi being yeasts and moulds. Mould spores germinate to produce the branching filaments known as hyphae. Yeasts are solitary rounded forms. Fungal infection routes are through the ingestion of toxins, inhalation of airborne toxins and skin. A virus is a microorganism that must infect a living cell to reproduce. There are many different viruses and strains. Minimize risks by using preventatives, keeping vaccinations up to date and maintaining a clean environment. Young and old animals are especially at risk as they have lowered immune systems, which may not be able to fight a virus. Bacteria is a group of unicellular microorganisms, which are larger than viruses. Bacteria commonly enter a host's body by invading a break in the host's membranes. They cause injury in tissue by producing toxins or poisons. Some toxins are secreted into tissue while the bacteria lives, while others are only released when the bacteria die or breaks up. In livestock, diseases such as blackleg, tetanus, pulpy kidney, arthrax, brucellosis, and botulism have serious health and financial implications. 
Protozoa are single-celled, microscopic animals. Protozoa are unique among the parasites in that they may multiply rapidly in their hosts to the extent that they can overwhelm them. This is particularly true of susceptible animals such as the young or older animals whose immune system has been compromised in some way. Examples of protozoa diseases are malaria, toxoplomosis, coccidiosis, and redwater. Protozoa are commonly transmitted by insects such as ticks and flies. This is a general educational video, and an animal showing signs of illness should be seen by a veterinary professional for advice, diagnosis, and treatment.